when it comes to preaching the gospel to the broken hearts and setting captives free that's what jesus said anointing of the lord is upon me i i came to set the captives free and preach the gospel to the poor and to the broken hearts you know so that's the calling that uh, when we think about the preaching so now when it comes to sharing our part of the gospel you know uh, i think in this world today there are two extremes one is into so much into preaching to these prosperity gospels where you say okay you give this much you will be blessed or you come everything will pain will go and the second extreme where we also have okay if you follow jesus you will be poor you will have all the struggles you have all the difficulties you will be like beaten up and thrown out and you know all kind of things so there are two different kind of extremes in this world but i think the word must be preached as it is i think we must take the the originality of the word and we have to preach it so when i cannot deny the prosperity from the bible because it's not god's will for people to be poor and to struggle and die with poverty because whatever god you know in the in the old testament you see god was always blessing people it's all about prosperity you know when they give they were always always blessed and it's like you will not be like a tail you will be like a head that's what the scripture says all the time in the old testament but when you come to new testament where the spirit of god was introduced jesus is always talking about spirit healing in the spirit just never only taught talk about the physical realm he taught us and revealed us spiritual realm that's why in new testament you see angels are been revealed also the devils are been revealed they're exposed now what i believe when we go to a non believer when we go to a person who's been broken and uh, been tortured by the enemy you have to preach the gospel good news if the person is going through a sickness you preach the good news because the gospel itself has a shalom in it a shalom in a shalom the original meaning of the shalom you have a healing in it yes. a person has been suffering by the sickness you preach the healing why because jesus came to heal there's no doubt and one of the gift of the holy spirit is also healing so you must preach the healing but now how the healing will process now when your spirit is healed your body will be healed it's like god made you with a mud in a human statue he made it was a mud and unless the spirit was given the body was never been active right yeah. in the same way if my body get wounded and i'm a broken my spirit need to be healed first the attack of the devil and the people is the spirit and the mind now when i'm transformed and touched by the spirit of the lord my my mind transform my heart is getting healed my spirit is healing inside and then naturally the healing will flow into my body so what i focus on the people is that healing their soul and their spirit strengthening their mindset strengthening their heart what happen naturally they see the healing but now you know you lead them into the faith now when we come to you know prosperity you know i don't preach gospel to make people rich we don't preach the gospel to make people rich we preach the gospel to save the soul it should be always in our mind amen now when we go to a person who's been broken and poor, poor and you got to go and your target is their soul yeah you got to focus on the soul do not do never promise money to them because that is not a, the ultimate purpose but today the danger that we see in the world is that you promise money and they won't get it and they disappointed they won't even receive the gospel and so when i go to a poor person i would say heal first heal yourself your heart when you're healed inside you have a wisdom of god see wisdom of god creates wealth the bible says God gives the wisdom to a person his children and that creates wealth. Amen. And so what I teach the wisdom of God when they're healed inside their mind is peaceful at rest 
and where they have a wisdom of God. Even wisdom of God is the gift of the Holy Spirit. When I teach them wisdom to a poor person, poor person has a poor mentality all the time. The mentality needs to be changed. But that is only can happen to the Word of God. The Word of God tells we are the kings. We are the prince and princes of the kingdom of God. And God owns everything in this world. And you just imagine you are the owner of this entire world because your father is the owner of the entire world. You have never been poor. That is what the Word of God teaches. When I am strengthened in my mind with that, I am not worried about my poverty. And I have a wisdom by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Where I create things around me, where I create things around me, I'm not worried, I don't act like a poor. So the gospel can change a person. But never, when you go to a poor person, sell the gospel for money. Gospel is not for money. And that doesn't work, and it's a wrong gospel.